This is Eddie Muller. And in honor of Father's Day, Noir Alley is leaving the cops and crooks behind to spend some time with an average American family, circa 1948. But don't worry, Dad. You'll still get your fill of lust, larceny, and murder. Pitfall, this week's offering, is one of the more provocative and mature crime dramas of the 1940s. And while it definitely qualifies as a film noir, it also subverts many of the genre's established tropes. Pitfall probably would have a greater reputation today if over the years it had been more readily available in repertory cinemas, on television, and in various home entertainment formats. But like many movies of the era produced outside a major studio, it became an orphan and it has struggled to survive. So let's thank the Film Foundation, the UCLA Film and Television Archive, and now Kino Lorber for keeping this film alive and once again making it available. Now today's broadcast will bring the film to a bigger audience and I hope you all appreciate what an exceptional piece of work it is. As I said a few weeks back when we showed his 1954 thriller, Crime Wave, Andre de Toth may be the most undersung director of his time. He made some of the freshest, most unconventional and cinematically sophisticated movies of the classic Hollywood era. And Pitfall is right there with the best of them. Now, the movie was the first offering of Regal Productions created by veteran B-movie producer Samuel Bischoff. And I guarantee you this was not only the first, but the best of Regal's 38 films unless your taste runs to The Women of Pitcairn Island or Space Master X7. Now, Dick Powell was the most prominent member of the Regal's board of directors, so it's no surprise the company's maiden effort was tailor-made for the actor, who by 1948 had completely transformed himself from a one-time hoofer and crooner to a fixture of the film noir movement. This is just a warning, Matt. If you're real smart, you'll take it seriously. Leave the girl alone. Stay away from her. If I ever hear that you threaten to do anything about my family again, I'll kill you, Meg. The source novel, entitled The Pitfall, was written by Jay Draitler, familiar to noir fans as the screenwriter of Laura, The Dark Corner, and Call Northside 777. The book was adapted from a treatment Draitler had written at Fox called Husbands Die First. The biggest difference between the book and the film is that the novel is a Hollywood drama revolving around the sexual machinations of movie executives and their underlings. Sounds kind of timely, even today. But Powell and de Toth changed the story to make it germane to the average American male. And de Toth later claimed that Powell completely identified with the character of John Forbes, that there was truth in Powell's performance because in his own life he was trying to end a sticky affair having cheated on his wife, June Allison. Now, according to de Toth, the film was Powell's way of atoning for his adultery. Now, he admired Powell as a businessman and an actor, but as a person, de Toth found him to be, quote, a schmuck. Now, bear in mind, the Hungarian director's use of epithets was often mixed up, and he was himself a womanizer of legendary proportions, a legend he happily extolled, despite being married to Veronica Lake. Although Carl Cam got credit for this script, it really is the work of de Toth and uncredited William Bowers. Few writers in Hollywood were better than Bill Bowers at seasoning an already well-structured story to cook up something special. He was a master of the tossed-off wisecrack, and Powell was a maestro at delivering them. In his four films prior to Pitfall, Powell had portrayed a private eye, a vengeful soldier, a professional gambler, and a federal agent, all standard-issue Hollywood heroes. Pitfall's John Forbes, middle-aged insurance man, was a different kind of character, except that Bowers still gave Powell the snappy and sarcastic humor crucial to his new screen persona. Well, your breakfast is on the table, Donnelly. Where else would it be? Hmm? Here, Powell's wisecracks come at his own expense as he picks himself apart for leading such a dull, unfulfilled life, which, of course, leads him into an affair with Elizabeth Scott. Do you have to be someplace for dinner? No. No, I don't have to be anywhere. Well, here's to dinner. This is not, however, the big passion play you get in most noir films, but that doesn't mean 
the consequences won't be just as dire, especially when the other man is played by Raymond Burr. He just played memorably heavy roles in Desperate and Raw Deal, but those baddies were just one-dimensional cartoons. Here, Burr is believably human, which makes his sociopathic behavior all the more frightening. You know, I'm a great gambler, Moon, but what's more important, I'm a lucky gambler. Jane Wyatt, who plays Powell's wife, would soon be enshrined as the all-American mom on the TV hit Father Knows Best. Now, six years before that pan to parenthood appeared on television, Pitfall suggested that the conventional life of an average American husband and father would more likely strangle him than satisfy him. So obviously, we've picked the perfect film to celebrate Father's Day. Enjoy Pitfall.